the excitement I feel is letting you know that tomorrow is May 1st. We've made it. We've come through a whole month in April like we've never seen before. Hopefully in April like we never see again. But joy is coming in the morning. But we're going to have a time in the Lord tonight. I believe God is going to speak through his word. So if those of you here that are here can stand. We're going to invite God's presence into our midst. Open the service with prayer. And then we're going to have our time in the Lord tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now and invite his presence into our midst. Lord Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, once again for another beautiful day that you've given us. For another opportunity, Lord, to praise and magnify and lift up your name, Lord. We ask you now, Lord Jesus, just to come down in a mighty way with your spirit. Saturate every heart that is listening right now, Lord. Anoint Pastor Brown this morning as he brings forth your word. Allow it to minister and flow into the hearts and souls of those that are listening, Lord. Anoint Brother Klein as he sings a song this evening, Lord. Allow his worship to minister to those that hear it, God. You've been good to us, Lord, and we appreciate you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you sit on high and you look down low and that your arm is not short, that you cannot save. You're good to us, Lord, and we're thankful for it. We love you. We appreciate you. We ask these things in your precious name that we can give you all praise and glory. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. At this time, I'm going to have Elder Thomas Klein come. He's going to sing a song for you, maybe leave a word of testimony. And when he's finished, Pastor Brown will come up and deliver what God has laid upon his heart for this message. Thank you, Brother Mike. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise Be the Lord. Seated. And uh, we're just glad to be back in the house of the Lord. I know we always say that, but, uh, you know, the older you get. Right. right. And uh, as you see the evil days approaching. Yes, sir. And that's what the Bible calls them, and there's good reason for that, because they're... Uh, there are things that affect you, you know, you're you're not young. Right. Like you used to be, and you can't do what you used to do. Right. And uh, your memory fades on you. Right. Things are not as sharp as it used to be. But uh, I I've always been blessed to be around people that have wonderful memories. Yes. And the memories, precious memories. There's a song that we've sang for years, Precious Memories, How They Linger. All right. And oh my, there's, there's nothing that can replace uh, the precious memories that I have. All right. And uh, I'm thankful to God for them, uh, thankful I have good memories. You know, there's some folks that memories are not real good. Right. But I'm thankful for the blessings that I've received in this life. I'm thankful for my family and the memories that I have of them. Uh, I have no reason to be ashamed of any of the memories I have. There's right. things that, uh, you know, you did before you served the Lord that you're, you don't want people to know about maybe, but uh, yeah. thankful to God for the good memories. Yeah. And I have surely have plenty of them. Uh, I've met some wonderful people in my life. I uh, was raised by wonderful people. I had wonderful sisters. Didn't have no brothers, but I had some wonderful sisters. And uh, I'm just thankful that God's let me live this long. I hope he extends it a little bit. In fact, I hope he extends it a lot. But, uh, that uh, remains to be seen. And I do believe that you can lengthen and shorten your days sure. by the type of life you live. Right. Amen, brother. You yes, know, sir. Uh, let's face it, uh, I'm a little bit overweight, but that's my own fault. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. And uh, I could do a lot better than that, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, through righteous living, Righteous living will lengthen your days upon this earth. All right, yes, sir. I, I, I just believe that. Uh, you know, I, I know I've lived the other way. And uh, I'm thankful for God that he gave me 
a sound mind. Amen, brother. Yes, sir. A sound mind. I, I know what to appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about a thought that I had the other day about what have I learned from church? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Brother Steve, when I think back. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. When I think back, when I came into the church, I was like I, I was like anybody else. I was like a child. Sure, yes, sir. There was things about living for God that I had no idea about. No idea. Come on now. Amen. I, I really didn't know how to, where to start. Right. Thank God that um, I had men of God that I sat under. Yes, sir. That told me the truth. Amen. I didn't always like it, but they told it to me anyway. And uh, I tried to tell that to young people that get in the church. There are some things that we're going to say to you that might hurt your feelings, but you just stick with us. Yes, sir. Come on now. And uh, I'm kind of like what Moses told his father-in-law. You come yes. with us and we'll do you good. Amen. Right. Right. And uh, I never forgot that, Brother Steve, when I read that. Come on. Yes, Moses sir. told him, you come with us and, and we'll do you good. Yes, sir. So I praise God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. I praise Him for the salvation. I'm going to try and sing a song for you tonight about this old house that's wearing out. This old house. song tonight yes, for those words yes. I was singing that chorus 
today, Lord, with that song. Uh, God, leave it on my mind. Praise the Lord. We do appreciate all of you that have tuned in tonight, that are watching this Bible study this evening. We welcome you. And it's glad, we're glad to have you a part of this uh, service here this evening. I am thankful to the Lord tonight for the privilege of being able to once again bring the word of God to you tonight. Thankful for the blessings of the Lord. And um, yeah, tomorrow's May 1st. Yeah. Uh, sounds good, yeah. May 1st. Um, <clears throat> I guess uh, after tomorrow we'll be leaving phase zero, uh, maybe entering into phase one uh, of the reopening, but uh, phase one ain't much better than phase zero, right. but um, the good thing is it's moving in the right direction, yeah. and hopefully these phases move through relatively quickly. Um, but uh, it's it's good to be at the end of this thing or coming out of this thing and then uh, it continuing to go on the way it was. Right. It surely is. The conversations have changed. All right. Instead of what what else is going to be closed or what else is going to be uh, hindered, um, we're, the discussion is how we're opening. Uh, how we're moving forward and that's always a good thing it's always a good thing Amen. Um, and for the church um, I do want you to know that um, the best of you is uh, coming to a, a conclusion very quickly uh, I do appreciate uh, Sean Rains and his work I believe he's tuned in tonight um, doing a great job out in the vestibule and we pretty much have most of it done uh, tomorrow. Uh, if you ever are in the area want to stop by and take a look at it, you can. Uh, it's really, it's a big difference from when the last time you were here. Let's put it that way. Um, I think you will be pleasantly surprised um, and uh, I know you will enjoy it. You will definitely enjoy it. Uh, we have some stuff that we need to do out there ourselves, but um, by the time we get back together, it should be all in place. And uh, we're thankful for that. Really are appreciative of that. Yeah. But those of you uh, that have your Bibles and are with us here this evening, you could stand. Those of you that are home, if you return with us to the book of Joshua, Joshua uh, chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read two verses of scripture in your hearing from this first chapter of the book of Joshua. I do appreciate our technology team that's here tonight. It's been here every service. Uh, appreciate uh, my grandson Zach and brother Mikey Klein. Uh, video on these and making this possible uh, to get out to you all. And um, I, I've seen some of the comments. Uh, I know Phyllis has commented, uh, hoping that we continue to do this even once we get back into service. Well, we're planning on doing this. There is there's an extended, and I'm going to call them church family, beyond the membership that is here uh, right. that are miles away but they want to be connected and uh, it's a means for them to be connected and I appreciate them wanting to tune in to us and to hear and to see what's going on here uh, so I do appreciate uh, the technology team do appreciate Sister Ashley signing uh, getting that uh, out to the deaf ministry. Uh, Brother Richard watches and he's able to be signed uh, here and uh, we do appreciate her uh, taking the time
to do that for us. Joshua chapter 1, verse not, uh, 10 and 11. I'm going to read in your hearing. And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan, and go into go in to pass to possess the land which your Lord uh, God giveth you to possess it. By the help of the Lord this evening, we're going to speak to you on this thought or subject, and it is a question that is being asked, and that that is this: What are we preparing for? What are we preparing for? Here in this passage of scripture, Joshua commands his officers to go amongst the people and to tell them to prepare you villas. Yes. Because within three days, we're going to pass over this Jordan. Right. And we are going to possess the land that the Lord, God, gave to us yes. to possess. Yes, that's right. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you this season. For the privileged opportunity to stand once again, Lord, before your people, Lord, and before all those that have tuned in here this evening, Lord, to break the bread of life. I pray, Lord God, we need your touch. We need your help. Lord, for without you, Lord, we can do absolutely nothing. Lord, we pray for your anointing touch to guide our thoughts and words here this evening. Guide those words, Lord, we pray. Anoint our hearts and ears that we might receive this word, we pray here to this evening. Lord, minister to every heart and soul, Lord God, we pray. Lord, we're asking it, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen to God. God bless your hearts. You may be seated. The question is, what are we preparing for? In this particular passage of Scripture, the children of Israel were getting ready to pass over the river Jordan and to enter into the land that the Lord told them that he was going to give to them. Yes. And not only give to them, but that he was going to give it to them to possess it. Yes. This was a long time coming. It was a lot longer than what it needed to be. They ended up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years because they failed to do what God wanted them to do. Right. That's right, brother. When they allowed fear instead of their faith in God yes. to dictate their life. Yes. Come on, brother. And because they feared the inhabitants and because they looked at them and saw them as giants right. and saw themselves as grasshoppers, they did not enter into the land of promise or the land of Canaan. That's right. And they wandered a year for every day that the spies was in the land, which was 40 days, so it ended up being 40 years yes. that they wandered in the wilderness. Joshua brings the people of God to the brink of the promise, and he's going to take them into the land of Canaan. Amen. And in this first chapter, and these verses that we've read to you, we see what the, uh, the Lord had told him to do. We, we find in verse number nine that uh, the Lord reminded him. He said, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So he reminds them of this, and then Joshua commands his officers of the people and tells them, you go amongst the people, yes, sir. and you tell them that they need to prepare. prepare. Yes, sir. They need to prepare some vittles. They need to prepare some supplies. Yes. Because within three days, three days. Yes, sir. we're going to pass over this river Jordan, and we're going in to possess the land yes. which the Lord God giveth you to possess. Yes. Yes. The promise that was made many, many years ago mm -hmm. 
has come to the brink of being realized. But they needed to prepare before they crossed the River Jordan. There's always preparation that needs to be done in our life, no matter what it is that we are endeavoring to do. Yes. Preparation is a, a tremendous key uh, in our lives. Um, without preparation, we will fail. Amen. 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 All right. We must prepare. And the question is, what are we preparing for? Amen, brother. That's good. I'm excited this evening to know that people are preparing to reopen. Yes. Yeah, come on now. I'm excited to realize that we are moving in that direction. Yes, amen. We are changing the conversation yes. amen. from closure to opening. Yes. yes, amen. We are moving in that direction, but to do that, there has to be preparation. Yes. And that's what's going on is preparation. Right. How do we open right. or reopen? What do we need to do? And keep in mind for all of us, authorities, we included, it's all a new endeavor. Yes. Right. Yes. Everyone is just trying to feel their way through this. But what we are doing is making preparation. Amen. We must always be making preparation to move forward. Amen. If we want to achieve or if we want to accomplish uh, what God intends for us to have in life. Right. I do not believe that God intends for his people to prepare for failure. I don't believe that the Lord ever intended for his people to prepare for defeat. Right, that's right, brother. But I believe that he always wants his people preparing for success. Yes. Preparing for victory in their life. Amen. I mean, his kingdom, his church. He said, upon this rock I'll build my church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. That tells me that God's church is not designed for failure. Right. So God does not want us as a people to think of failure Amen. or to prepare for failure right. or to prepare for defeat. But what we should be preparing for is for possession. Yes. We should be preparing for receiving the promise of God. We should be preparing for victory in our lives. So was the case with the children of Israel when they were getting ready to enter into the promised land. Was there going to be battles for them to fight when they crossed the river Jordan? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Was there going to be hills for them to climb? Absolutely. Right. Were there walled cities that they were going to come up against? Absolutely. Was there going to be giants in the land just like there was 40 years earlier? Absolutely. Right. The giants were still there. But what they understood is, is that the God that brought them through the wilderness, yes, the God that brought their forefathers up out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, yes, that see. God that fed them for 40 years in the wilderness with manna from on high, right. that God that gave them water to drink when there was no water to be found, if he turned bitter water sweet, he would do it. If he needed to bring water out of a rock, he would do it. He would provide and he would supply for their every need. He even gave them meat to eat. Yeah. That's right, brother. Had the quail fly over, and for some reason, they fell out of the sky. Come on now. And they just went out and picked them up. Didn't need a shotgun. Didn't need any hunting dogs. Right. Come on, brother. God provided for them. Absolutely. They believed that the God that did all of this for them was the God that was going to give them victory when they crossed over that river Jordan. Yes. All they realized was we just need to obey what God wants us to do in our life. And if we just follow the leading of the Lord, God is able to bring down the walled cities. 
He's able to defeat the giants that are in the land. God is able to give us the victory. It did not mean that they weren't going to have to fight any battles. It didn't mean that they weren't going to have to have any struggles in life. Well, they still had to fight. They still had things that they had to do. But they believed that God was going to give them the victory. So what they were doing when Joshua said, I want you to prepare bills. I want you to make preparations because we are about to enter the promise of God. We are about to enter into the land. And we're not just going to not go in there and just wander around. We're going in there to possess it. We're going in there to accomplish something. The journey may have been long and it may have been wearisome in this wilderness, but you know what? This thing is coming to a conclusion. We are leaving the wilderness behind us and we're going to move forward. And can I say to the church, we're coming out of the wilderness and we're soon going to leave it behind us and we just need to prepare for our future. We need to prepare for the victory that God wants us to have as a people and as a church. We just need to make preparations. We need to prepare. Listen to this. Failure to prepare is preparing for failure. Failure to prepare is preparation for failure. You cannot have the attitude, well, whatever happens, happens. Right. Amen. Right, brother. Whatever will be, will be. My God and my Lord. You can't live your life like a leaf floating in the breeze. Right. right. Wherever the wind carries you, that's where you're going to be. If it decides to blow, then you're going to move on down the road. You cannot live your life that way and be successful. Come on, that is good. Successful people have a goal or they have a vision that they are they have set their sights on. They have they have something that they're working towards. Yeah. They are preparing for that. Without vision, the scripture says without a vision the people will perish. Right. A wise man said in Proverbs. Without vision, the people will perish. you got to have a vision. You have to have some foresight. You have to have a goal in your life. If you don't have any goal in your life, then you won't know how to prepare. Right. That's good. <clears throat> That's right. We travel from place to place. You can decide, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Kansas. All right. You, you Salina, Kansas. Brother Chris Rhodes, who listens in, he's in Salina, Kansas. You have to first have a destination. Right. You have to have somewhere where you're going. You got to know where you're going to be able to prepare to get there. Once you have your goal, once you have your destination, once you have your vision set, then you can begin to prepare. Right. Now, how am I going to get from Niles, Ohio to Salina, Kansas? I can take an airplane. I can drive a car. I can take a train. I can take a bus. I can ride a bike. I can walk. For most of us, our two options would be drive or fly. Right. But until we know where we're going, right. we will not know what to do. We won't know what direction to take. We won't know where, what course to plot out until we set a destination. We have to have a goal in our life. Right. There was a goal for the children of Israel, and that was Canaan land. Once they knew where they were supposed to go, then it was just simply following the leading of the Lord and just keep doing what God wanted them to 
do and keep preparing to enter the land of promise. I don't know how things are going to be accomplished once I get there, but this one thing I know, I want to make it to Canaan land. I want to make it to the promised land. I believe that there is a place called heaven. I believe that he went to prepare a place for you and I. And I believe that with all of my heart. And that is my goal this evening. I want to make heaven my home. That's my vision. To be able to walk on those streets of gold. To see the walls of Jasper. To be in the presence of the Lord for eternity. To be in his presence will be everything to me. Oh, I have that as my goal. And because that's my goal, I have to prepare to get there. I got to make sure I'm doing everything I need to do to get there. I got to make preparation in my life to make that destination. Because just being that leaf blown in the wind is not going to take me there. Just having an attitude, well, what will be, will be, is not going to get me there. I have to have purpose in my life. I have to have a goal. I have to have a destination. Right, yes. Amen. You show me a successful individual and I'll show you someone that had goals in their life. Right. Amen. I'll show you someone that had a vision in their life. I'll show you someone that had a destination yes. that they were working towards. Amen. Because without that, you don't know what to do. Right. You know, you can't um, draw a bow or put a, put a gun up and then, you know, shoot. Right. Then sight. Right, right. That's right, Brother. You, you have to see where you're shooting. Aim. you got to know what you're aiming at. You can't shoot then aim. Right. Though I hunted with some folks that <laughs> kind of hunted that way. Yeah, come on. They just shoot at anything. <laughs> and they obviously didn't aim because they never bagged anything that they were shooting at. <laughs> and you can't do that. You have to have something you're aiming at. To be able to shoot and hit the target. Right. So you have to have that, that destination. You have to have that goal or that vision. And, and so the question this evening is, is what are we preparing for? What are we preparing for? Right. In Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 19, we read where... In verse 10 it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. Yes, sir. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Here is another case where the children of Israel had to prepare. Right. They're in the wilderness. They're on, at Mount Sinai. Moses goes amongst the people and he tells the people what the Lord told him. And that is you need to sanctify yourself today and tomorrow. Right. You need to get ready for the third day. Right. Matter of fact. After you sanctify yourself and you get yourself prepared, you need to wash your clothes right. and be ready against that third day. Because on the third day, the Lord is going to come down on Mount Sinai. Yes, glory. You know what this tells me is that there's some preparation that we need to do in our life to have the presence of the Lord yes. to come down on us. You want a visitation from the Lord in your life? 
and you think you're going to wander through life and just whenever the Lord comes by my way, then I'll, I'll feel the presence of the Lord. No, you can feel the presence of the Lord every day in your life. If you make up your mind, I'm going to sanctify myself. I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to get myself ready for the Lord. Let me tell you something. You sanctify yourself. You get your heart in tune with God. You can feel the presence of the Lord every day of your life. That's completely up to us. If we prepare our hearts, God will be there. Yes, amen. Amen. Brother, yes, sir. God will be there. Amen. You just don't have to wait till you come to the house of the Lord to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You get your heart prepared. The Lord will meet you in your living room. The Lord will meet you in your vehicle as you're driving down the road. Glory, glory. He'll meet you on the lawnmower, Brother Steve. Yeah, he will. Come on now. Yeah. Brother Steve was out mowing the other day. Glory. As he often does. Singing away. Yes, sir. God's good. We're in the vestibule. He's over at the house on the other side, and we can hear him singing away. We're indoors, he's outdoors, and away far, but he's singing. Amen. Yeah, come on. Well, you can have the presence of the Lord come down on the lawnmower. Oh, glory. Yes, yes. You can have the presence of the Lord come down on you while you're in your workplace. Yes. Whenever you sanctify yourself, whenever you get your heart in tune with the Lord, the presence of the Lord can come down. What he was doing was getting the children of Israel ready for a, a manifestation of the Lord like they hadn't seen. He was going to come down on Mount Sinai. The glory of the Lord was going to be in their midst. And he wanted them to be prepared for that. And so they had to get ready for it. So the question is, what are you getting ready for? What are you getting ready for? It's what we prepare for in life that's going to dictate what happens to us in life. There's two passages of Scripture, and I'm just going to give them to you, and I'll just simply mention to you what they say. It's Joel chapter 3 and verse 10. In Joel chapter 3 verse 10, Joel speaks about a time when the plowshares will be beaten into swords and the pruning hooks into spears. Then Micah in ch chapter 4 and verse 3 speaks of a time that is completely opposite. He says that they are going to beat the swords into into plowshares. And they're going to beat the spears into pruning hooks. So what you see here is two passages of Scripture, two different periods of time. But what is happening is here, the same metal that was used as a plow, that was used for cultivating, that was used for gardening or farming. Yes. Was beat into a weapon, a sword. Yes. A pruning hook that was used in gardening was beat into a spear. Come on. So what you're taking is a time of peace where you had these instruments of, of uh, gardening or farming that all of a sudden turned into a time of war and they needed to take these items and make them into instruments of war. Yes. Then you see Micah speaking about a time that is completely opposite where they take these weapons of war and they beat them back into instruments of peace and, and farming and cultivating. But the power of being able to make that steel whatever you wanted it to be. Yes. The steel will be whatever you want it to be. Right. You can make it into a sword or you can make it into a plowshare. Right. Yes. It's in your hands to make whatever you want out of it. You can make it into a pruning hook or you can make it into a spear. The choice is completely up to us. 
I simply mention those passages of Scripture to establish this point. You and I can make our life what we want it to be. It's in our hands. He said, I set before you life and death. I would that you would choose life, but you have the freedom to choose death. I set before you blessing and cursing, but the choice is up to us. Whatever we prepare for. I don't know about you, but I don't want to prepare for death. I don't want to prepare for cursing in my life. I want to prepare for life. I want to prepare for blessing. So that's what I have sought out in my life to do, is to prepare for revival, to prepare for blessing, to prepare for an in-gathering. That's what I'm looking to prepare for. What are we preparing for? There's many that view what's going on today as being uh, a very negative thing in their life, and it is. But we can take this yes. and turn it into something that it's not right now. We can take this That's good. Yes, sir. and prepare for what God That's right. is going to use this for. Yes. I don't think that we need to go out and buy a bunch of cemetery lots. Right. That's not what I'm preparing for. Right. Come on now. Yeah. Right. If you want to prepare for that in life, then go right ahead and do that. If you want to prepare for gloom and doom, you go ahead and prepare for that. But what I'm going to prepare for is victory. What I'm going to prepare for is triumph. What I'm going to prepare for is for victory in the kingdom. I'm going to prepare for revival. I'm not going to prepare for the falling away. I want to prepare for revival. Failure to prepare is preparation for failure. Understand the power has been given to you and I yes. to make the choice to do what we need to do right. to achieve positive outcomes in our life. That's right. As pastor, I'm not preparing for the church to close. Right? Amen. Come on now, that's right. right. All right. Amen. We're not preparing. For negative things no, sir, to happen. Amen. Right. What I'm preparing for is for us to move forward. Amen. What I'm preparing for is revival. Amen. What I'm preparing for is a great move of God. Yes. Amen. I tell you what, even in the absence of you saints of God to fill the house of the Lord where we can rejoice together, the presence of the Lord has Amen. been here. Service after service after service. I thank God. chapter the prophet Elisha mm -hmm. he was encountered by three kings the king of Israel the king of Judah and the king of Edom yes. those three kings got together to go against Moab mm -hmm. it was about seven days in the journey and they had no water they had no water to drink. They had no water water for their beasts. Right, right, right. And I believe it was Jehoshaphat that spoke up and said, The Lord has brought us here to turn us over to the to the Moabites. Right. And they got a hold of the prophet Elisha. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Elisha tells them in that third chapter, he said, You you have your men. Dig some ditches in this valley. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. In a time when there's no water. Yeah. yeah. 
He tells them to dig a ditch. Not a ditch, but ditches. Fill this valley full of ditches. And the prophet said unto them, you know what? It's not going to rain. Rain's not going to fill these ditches. There's not going to be any wind. You're not going to feel any wind. You're not going to feel some front moving through. You just dig the ditches. As absurd as it seemed in a time where they were had no water and a time that was dire in their life and they're going to fight against Moab and in their mind, they just felt that the Lord was going to turn them over to the Moabites. But here the man of God just says, you need to do something. You want water? You need to prepare for water. You want water? You need to prepare for water. You want revival? You need to prepare for revival. You want victory? Then prepare for victory. Amen. So they started digging the ditches. Yes, sir. Just... Like the man of God said. Matter of fact, he says, you know, this this may seem like a small thing, but I want you to I want you to understand something. Not only is God going to give you water to drink, right? But He's going to give you victory over Moab. Not only that, but He's going to give you victory over these cities, these tent cities. God is going to do some great things for you. So they dug those ditches and. Just like the man of God had said and made preparations for something that they were oblivious to. Right. And out of Edom yep. come water. Amen. It just said, out of Edom come water. And it filled the ditches that they had dug. I ask you the question this evening. If they would have failed to dig the ditches. Would the water have come? I'll answer it for you. No, it wouldn't have come. There are things that we need to do to prepare for the blessings of God in our life. It's one thing to read about the promise of God in our life. And it's another thing to prepare for the promise of God in our life. It's one thing to read about heaven. And to read about a place where we're never going to die. Or we're never going to grow old. Where there's not going to be any more sickness or disease. It's one thing to read about it. And it's another thing to prepare to get there. We got to make preparation. Yes. And the question is this what are we preparing for? Ah, yes. Hallelujah. And in that 2 Kings, the very next chapter, chapter number four, and all the first few verses, probably the first six, seven verses, it speaks about another story with the prophet Elisha. And it was a, a widow woman. And this this widow woman was a, a widow of a, a of one of the prophets of the Lord, and she had two sons, and and, and she was in debt, and the creditors, yes, something that most of us can relate to, oh, yeah. Come the creditors, yes. they were wanting their money. Yeah. Yeah. They was wanting what was owed to them, and they told the woman. If you can't pay, then you're going to have to turn your two sons over to be bondsmen. Right. Yes, sir. And they're going to be servants. Right. So she got a hold of the man of God and she asked the man of God about the situation. And he said, well, what do you got? What do you got? Come on now. Yes, sir. She said, well, I don't got anything in the house but uh, some oil. All right. He says, well, I'll tell you what you do. You and your sons go and borrow every vessel that you can borrow. Right. He said, borrow not a few. In other words, get as many as you can. Yes. Fill your house with them. Yes. Do whatever you can, but get as many vessels as you can in the house. Right. So they went and they borrowed a bunch of vessels and brought them into the house. He said, now I want you to start pouring out of the vessel that you have. That has the oil and start filling these vessels. That oil kept pouring and kept pouring. She would fill one vessel after another vessel after 
her another vessel until she ran out of vessels to fill. And when she ran out of vessels to fill, the Bible says the oil stayed. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Yes. He said, now you go and take all that oil and you go sell it. Yes. And you go pay your debt and you and your sons live in peace and in rest. Yes, yes, I ask you the question. If they didn't go borrow the vessels, right. would the miracle of the oil have happened in their life? Would they have been able to get out of debt without doing what they were asked to do? The answer is plain. No, it wouldn't have happened. In other words, they had to prepare for that miracle. They had to prepare for that blessing in their life. Oh, get all the vessels you can and just prepare for a miracle in your life. Oh, you need to prepare for a miracle in your life. You need to prepare for the blessing of God in your life. You need to prepare for salvation in your life. You need to prepare to make heaven your home. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes. yes. There's things that we have to do on our part. Amen, brother. But we need to get the goal in mind. That's right. We need to understand. We, we have to have that vision. What is it that you want to accomplish in life? Do you want to make heaven your home? Yes, sir. Amen, brother. Yes. Glory. Mm -hmm. I could ask you the question, do you want to be lost or do you want to go to hell? And I know what that answer would be, no. But not doing nothing, not preparing or failing to prepare to make heaven your home, that's preparation for failure in your life. Doing nothing will cause failure. Doing nothing will cause us to be lost. There's things that we must do. Set those sights. Set those goals. Yes, amen. Get that vision of what you are looking to accomplish or what God is looking to accomplish in your life. Right. We have many promises in the Word of God. Amen. But those promises will never be realized unless we prepare for them. Right. We have to make preparation for them. Amen. we got to prepare for the blessings of God in our life. I mean, it's like the blind man that the Lord anointed his eyes with mud yes. and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Right. If he didn't do what the Lord told him to do, the anointing of the Lord would have not have accomplished right. Right. what it was intended to do. That's right. Amen. We just need to do what God wants us to do in life. That's right. Mm -hmm. I believe that in this time that we've gone through, still going through, but coming out of, God has spoken to a lot of hearts. Amen. Right. Yes. God has got a, a whole lot of our attentions. Amen, brother. And what we need to do as we move out of this and we move forward is we need to act upon what we know God wants in our life. We need to make preparation for those things that God spoke to us. If God spoke to you in this past month, six weeks, you know, I need to make a change in my life. I need to get some things in order in my life spiritually. Set that as the target. Yes. You set that as your vision. Yes. And then start preparing to get there. Right. Start doing the things that you need to do to get there and to achieve that. Don't, don't look at failure. Don't look at the difficulty. Don't look at the hardship. Look at the positive. Look at the, 
Look at the accomplishment or the, the, the goal and the victory that you're trying to get in your life. Too many people approach things in life uh, half-heartedly. Right. Forty-four years ago, I got married. I was just a young pup, All right. eighteen years old. Didn't know a whole lot about anything, and I'm getting married. But I didn't go into marriage with the attitude, well, I'll give this a try. Right, right. Come on now, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll see if this fits me right. or suits me. Because you know, marriage at its best can be difficult at times. Sure. Right. Especially right. in those early years when you're in that adjustment phase. You know, it took a while for me to be able to get her. Come on. <laughs> where I needed her to be. <laughs> oh, She's probably good. thinking the same thing. Yeah. We got married. The discussion of who's taking the trash out. All right. She said, well, her dad took the trash out all the time. I said, well, my dad didn't do that. She said, well, your dad didn't, doesn't do anything. <laughs> I said, is that right? You wait till I tell him. Bless you, Lord. And I did. So there's that adjustment phase that you go through. But I went into marriage. We're going to make this thing work. Even in the hard times. That's right. Failure wasn't an option. No, sir. That's right. And when you take failure out of the equation, right. you'll work through a whole lot of things. Yes, when you take failure out of your equation of making heaven your home, yes. a lot of the bumps and a lot of the trials and a lot of the difficulties you might go through in life doesn't mean anything because failure is no option in your life. You're going to do everything you can to reach that goal. It doesn't matter what happens in life. It doesn't matter what comes or what goes. What matters is, is that I make heaven my home. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So the question is, what are we preparing for? We should be preparing for victory Amen. and triumph Amen. and revival. Yes. yes, right here and right now. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm excited. Yes, yes. Looking forward to seeing great things happen here. Amen. Amen. And we need to prepare for it. Yes. Yes. So you all prepare for it yourselves. You that need God in your life, you need to prepare for that. Right. Get God in your life. Hope you received something from this tonight. I hope it's been a blessing to you and something to encourage you uh, to move in the right direction yes. Amen, and accomplish the things that God wants you to accomplish in life. Yes. And ask us to stand here tonight as we conclude this service with a word of prayer. I do appreciate you all tuning in tonight. Uh, appreciate your comments, appreciate uh, your cards, texts, I appreciate it all. Uh, we're going to be back together here real soon. Uh, just hang in there. We're moving in the right direction. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, this evening for the time you've given us to be here to break this bread of life. I pray, Lord, that this word would be a help and a strength to each and every one that is heard and received this word tonight. Lord, help us, O oh God, to prepare, Lord, for the promises of God, to prepare for the victory, the revival, Lord, that you want us to have. Lord, I pray that you would go with each and every one of us, be a strength and a help to us, O oh Lord, we pray. Wherever we may be, strengthen and encourage, we pray, until we're able to meet again. Lord, we're asking it in Jesus' precious name. 
Amen to God. God bless your hearts. Lord willing, we shall see you back here on Sunday morning, 1030. God bless you.